episode of the Ever Black Podcast is brought to you by Death Wish Hot Rods and Customs. Check out their Instagram for all their new t-shirts, caps, beanies, cups, and the all-new Atomic Death lineup. Hey, this is Trevor Sternad from the Black Dolly Murder here, and you're listening to the Ever Black Podcast. Hey, human scum, this is odorous from Guam. I'm going to the Fear Factory. This is George Corps from Under Fisher. This is Jasmine Delodrop. This is Wade from Our Last Enemy. This is Mike Nitz from Cool South Tennessee. He is at Wednesday 13. This is Bruce Evans. This is Rex from Kill Devil Hill. This is Gary Bruce from Simple Tour, and you're listening to Ever Black Podcast. What a bunch of knickknacks you have there, sir. I do, yes. I'm. Uh, I have a whole room of yeah. craziness. Yeah, he yeah. man. Um, I found a really, really um, rare, like a toy store in Hawaii, not too long ago, that had the craziest shit at reasonable prices, all in its packages, just like this giant empty toy store. I meaning no no customers and just like a tin box that said toys i'm like oh, i've got kids maybe they'll have toys and i'm like oh these are, these are toys um and they, but like i mean he had everything from like I, I couldn't i think of a toy and there was like all of them all in the wrapper oh. still and shit. i should did you get anything was, i didn't i didn't because i was looking for like shit for two i didn't you know stuff to yeah, take yeah, out yeah. of wrappers not necessarily in no, if you collect that stuff it's kind of you know like he, we did some price comparison and he's like like almost half that of your average person selling it you know because you, you're a collector as well i know you, you you collect taxidermy well i had taxidermy and i had a collection of it but i don't know that i collected it um you know like um i uh I have a lot of minerals. I don't know why the fuck I did that either. But uh, you know, like at some point, some at some point not too long ago, I was just like, I've got a collection of a lot of stuff and things, and I kind of got sick of uh, tripping over it or, or organizing or just worrying about it and things. Like, so I'm trying to decollect. Um, you know, like that's me. My mind. Hey, that's me at the moment. There's some stuff I just can't get rid of. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna say uh-huh. very, very low because my wife's in the next room and she's like, "You gotta get rid of your stuff." And I'm like, "Oh no, nah, I love it too much." But uh, <laughs> I didn't say that. I said more. But um, <laughs> Isaac, uh, mate, thanks for joining us on the show. And uh, good morning from the arse end of the world, as I say, because that's where we are, right? Oh, down. I'm a big fan of uh, Australian. And, and actually in New Zealand. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we haven't seen you in a while, mate. It's no, been- it's, kind of, it's a trip. It's a, getting everyone on a plane at the right time and, and having it all line up and um, not lose our shirts is uh, <laughs> it's, it's a balancing act, man. It's a, yeah. I'm always surprised. I'm like, we're playing reasonably sized places. It's why, why is it not working? Because flying to Australia is expensive, Isaac, and flying your equipment to Australia is a fucking that's the thing, yes, and stuff like and, that's where they get you. And you got lots of stuff, too. I mean, you guys, you know, yeah. you don't pack a lot. We're gonna show up and just do acapella, just like <laughs> and be a barbershop quartet band, you know. You could do it, you know, you could do it, and I, people would be like losing their shit over it, which would be amazing, but uh. Of course, man, this new Modest Mouse album, man, The Golden Casket, I love the absolute fuck out of this album, dude. Like, um, I'm a massive yeah. fan, and I've been a fan for a very long time. So for us, when we're waiting for the album, we're like, we know it's going to be good. And, uh, man, this one seemed to give you a little bit less grief than uh, Strangers to Ourselves. Is that right? Yeah, Strangers to Ourselves was... Um... I was, we were talking about that yesterday. We were all practicing, get ready to go out on tour and stuff. Um, and I was just like, that, that was a, a tedious fucking record. Mainly because, um, honestly, I, I just couldn't, I, I knew what I wanted to be. And I think it was already that, but I couldn't believe in it, you know, like, or I didn't know, I don't know how to, you know, like something happened. So we just ended up spending like fucking over a year. Or so just missing it over and over again. And like, you know, like 
producers. Like, sit someone down at the console and they'd be, next. Uh, <laughs> including myself. I started by, like, I'm the producer. I'm like, next. <laughs> um, so, you know. <laughs> My, uh, that one was a nightmare. This one, it just kind of... Um, one thing that I didn't do is work on my schedule as much on this one. And I think that was helpful. You yeah. Know, I was just like, okay, I'm going, I'm in here at this point. These, these are the hours to do it. And it's fucking expensive. Because initially we were going to record this record in my studio. And that's just, you know, all the time in the world. And I'll be running up the hill, you know, like up to my house every fucking an hour or so and then hang with my kids for two hours because I you don't they don't they're sticky they won't can't can't get out the door yeah. <laughs> um yeah, that one. Thing. Uh, so you know I went and worked at the guy Dave Sardi's place and um especially after a while I was just like very aware that um that I had you know I like the the, the clock was ticking and shit so I guess it's, yeah that's a, that's a neat story. I don't know. No, no, I, we're just having it's lagging a little bit here. Like the the internet's sort of dragging a little bit. So I'm sorry if you if I'm freezing up. But uh, as I said, we are on the ass end of the world. We are very far down. But um, yeah, hey, you're cracking a cold one, mate. We're talking. Oh, dude. Oh, oh no, no, no. It's that sparkling water. I was moving. I was moving oh. slow from an ale last night. So. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, of course, uh, you know. It, it, did you write a whole bunch of stuff for this album that got left off? I mean, I know with the last yeah. time. Yeah, I'm not, um, not, it, I just didn't, those songs I felt like still needed a little tweaking. So there's still some songs that I just was like, uh, maybe, maybe a, a few more days of work or so on this and the record's fucking good without it. Let's just, let's just move, move on. You know, like I, I didn't want to make a record that was, had too much stuff on it because I've, uh, I've largely made a career doing that, and sometimes I just feel like it's a bit, it's a bit overwhelming, mm. you know. Hey, but with uh, in regards to the the tone of the album, I mean, it doesn't feel as dark as previous albums. I mean, is that sort of reflection where you're sort of at at the moment? Well, I mean, no, I, like, I'm not trying to turn that smile upside down or anything, but no, I mean, like, uh. Part of me's there, and part of me, you know, part of me lives in the nightmare reality that we all have and shit. But you know, like when working on this record, you know, like with what was going on, in, you know, my neck of the woods, rioting, fucking daily, like daily riots, and uh, you know, like obviously, like death tolls rise and blah blah blah. Um, uh, you know, like you guys have fucking had your fair share of fires. I'm, mean, I guess, still have anything left to burn. Oh. Um, oh. Anyways, yeah. I, you know, I, I kind of was just like, uh, um, working on projecting a reality and things, yeah, yeah. you know, like, yeah. uh, like uh, I, you know, I've got, I've got babies, and I kind of feel like if, if I can't find something, something to be like, no, oh, shit, this is doable and whatnot, then, and so I end up, uh. I end up maybe tricking myself into feeling too good about a bad situation. If that makes any sense. No, that makes sense. That makes sense. But I mean, you've written some stuff that, you know, some of the earlier material, there's a, there's an, a, a, some of it, there's an anger and there's a sadness that, that definitely helped me deal with my own throughout the years. And I think not only that, you've also got some stuff that, that really hits hard emotionally on each album. And, and, you know, like, there's tracks like Little Motel, Ocean Breathe Salty, and on this one you've got um, Lace's Shoes, which is is a very personal song and can be relatable. You know, I'm a I'm a parent, and that song just hit me really hard. Do you find those sort of songs uh, are a little bit more difficult to write, being from that personal perspective? Um, the, they're easy to write, hard to hard to uh, hand hand put out there. You know. Like, because because being just fully, you know, being honest with yourself or earnest, uh, it, it's hard to not make it to get too cute and whatnot. And that's that's for sure. You know, like like when you're singing about loving your kids, 
it's yeah. hard not to get too sad saccharine and shit you know um but no i think i think it's just uh the, the, that song in particular is just harder to actually like give to the public you know it's like ah, this is kind of um what is someone else going to do with this song about my kids you know and shit but i think that there's you know that's that's in the writing make it everyone's yeah and it's mate it's it's very relatable it's it's a very it's a beautiful song man and not only that i mean you've got a knack for dubbing vocals as well which i don't think anyone does the way you do i mean for instance i mean there's a parting of the sensory the end of that i think well, that song in general, I think, is one of the greatest things ever put down on wax, dude. Like, <laughs> really nice of you, man. Man, that, is, that is not an often referenced song, and it is. I, I'm I'm very proud of that song. So thanks, man. I tried to replicate the end of that in a death metal song, and oh, that's, I couldn't that's, that's, nail it. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, that's. Um, it's a hard one. It, 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 it's frantic or yeah what would you what, yeah there's a lot going on there uh don't don't plan on breathing doing it <laughs> i mean i love it i love the dubs but i mean you, you've you're known for it i mean you've done where do these ideas come from do they come from you know the initial oh, I just let them fall out like they usually like half the time when we're writing it's like like when we're writing music it just comes from us playing and the lyrics are the same thing you know like half of it makes sense and then i have to kind of piece it together out of on a on a peak fucking okay, like what was that what was going on there um and things but uh it seems like the easiest place is just i don't know like it's kind of a blackout mode for me when when playing music gets good and um sort of like speaking in tongues i guess just let it roll yeah um, yeah Everyone knows about, you know, speaking in tongues. Everyone does it. Uh, <laughs> now you understand. Um, <laughs> no, it, 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 it gets trancy, and that's kind of how that shit happens a lot of the time. Mate, I love it. I love hey, guys, it. you have time for one more question. Oh, okay. Oh, I've got some. Okay, sorry, man. I'll get, like, we can, we, can probably, we can probably cheat the clock. Can we cheat the clock a little here? Of course. All right. Awesome. Good. Thanks, man. Well, here's another thing. All right. Like I'm a I'm I, I love my metal and I know a lot a lot of metal dudes like love Modest Mouse. There's some especially down here. There's definitely a crossover, and I don't know how it is over where you are. And I know Metallica love you guys too because you played that uh, Orion Festival years ago, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that was that was an odd show. Um, really? I, yeah, because like it, there was a. There's a lot of middle-aged Metallica fans just being like, what is going on? Why? This is not metal. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it wasn't like, you never want to be that thing in the way of, uh, like we opened for Beyonce once and shit, and that was equally as fucking weird. Oh. Because uh, apparently we don't have the same demographic and things. I'm just, I'm just like, well, this is where pretty people go. <laughs> Go to get crushed by a other just a mob of just everyone, you know, it's like it's crazy. Um, but yeah, it's like both both situations. What? what? See, but down here, I Crap. guarantee it'd be a different story altogether because I know yeah. so many dudes that are just like you. I mentioned Modest Mouse in the same stuff as like Cannibal Corpse, and they're like, "Oh yeah," like it's an unsaid thing. Have you heard of that over the, anywhere else? Not so much. I mean, like, well, yeah, actually, fucking, you know, Germany or like Europe and stuff does fine with this too. But America's really good at like compartmentalizing. Like, you're you're into metal and you're into metal. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Story shit, which makes you know, like, a kind of nebulous band like ourselves a little hard to, you know, uh, it gets tricky because people want to know that they're with their crew, or their yeah, group, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, and things. And like, yeah, I remember you know we used to have a bunch of like. Well, it was like kind of you know like train hop and crusty kids at our shows and stuff and whatnot uh and i think they had a meeting because then just one day they're just gone what? it was like it used to be a, a thing and then i think it was just like oh wait this isn't this isn't like crusty punk music and i was like oh shit. <laughs> that's great uh we, i mean you're uh you, you're prepping for this massive tour um it's massive it's a really big tour that's coming up 
Um, how's yeah. that going with everything going on, man? I know things are starting to open it up, you know? I think it's going to be fine. I mean, I'm not on that end. Like, you know, if you're at this point, if you're vaccinated, you're invincible and shit. That's why I don't even look for when I cross the street anymore. I'm just like, oh, no. um, feeling, feeling good. I mean, things here are back to, you know, like we, we reached herd immunity in Portland. And so everything just kind of opened up uh, and feels good i did go to the playground the other day and there was like a kid showed up just coughing like this crazy cough i was like, oh, I was like i'm not heard a cough on that on someone who wasn't <laughs> smoking um and, and so i was like kids in the car i just packed them up and fucking ran away basically um because can't immune can't immunize the uh, toddlers or uh, things so yeah anyways uh about tour though i i uh i feel yeah i'm not i'm I'm very happy to be get going again, you know, like, uh, and I have actually, I've been on my, I've literally been on my management's cases. Like when can we tour Australia? Not yet. Still not yet. I mean, oh man, uh, I tell you what, like I, I, I flew to Sydney last time you were here because you weren't playing up on the Gold Coast. I literally jumped on a plane, skipped States completely and stayed with a friend. Uh, where, just so I could Gold Coast you live? Sorry. Whereabouts on the Gold Coast do you live? I'm on the northern end of the Gold Coast. Okay. So, yeah, but you were playing, I think it was Splendor in the Grass, which is way down there. Yeah. Way down there, and it was already sold out. So I uh, I got my ass on a plane, I got down there, and I was hoping you'd come back. So uh, come on, man. We got the... Well, yeah, uh, absolutely. <laughs> I know that's all you can say right now. Eh? It's, no, it's I, mean, I, I, I just don't I want to sound pandering but i will yeah. but i but i yeah. but i am fucking actually it, it's kind of it's kind of my place i was i was trying to move to new zealand and things and shit like that's been my uh, a goal although you are different places i get that very much <laughs> so. you're you're the continent island of fucking deadly things and they're the the tiny island of safe things hobbits i like that safe shit yeah hobbits. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. um <laughs> We can't even go there at the moment, mate. But oh, really? No, I mean they—they—they've they, 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 got a good thing going. They, you know, way to make yourself look like a paradise, but not getting sick. No, um, yeah, that's it. It's only a rowboat away, man. Like literally, I you gotta just get over there, rowboat, and come back. You know, but they won't let me. But uh, dude, I, I think I don't know. I, I appreciate you uh, extending the time, and I—I I, I don't want to keep you up too long. But uh, mate. It's been an absolute pleasure hanging out with you and talking uh, all things mouse and crazy stuff. And uh, as a as a long term fan, this means a lot that you've helped me through a lot of uh, hard times in my life, man. So, and I can't wait to see you guys down here. The Golden Casket is out now everywhere. Get it. The links are down here. Isaac, take care, brother, and we'll see you soon. See you, man. You take care. Thank you, Bye. dude. Thank you.